I have a question for all you photographers. Do you keep your RAWs? A friend of mine had this conversation the other day where he said that he deleted all of his RAWs after the project was finished. I never done this. I've never deleted any of my RAWs before. I have them all backed up on multiple hard drives and it's just a way for me to kind of go back if I ever need to. And I thought this was kind of crazy to me. And in light of that today, another friend of mine has shared some of his old RAWs and we're gonna go try and edit them. So these raw photos that I'm just about to download are from a good friend, Anthony. I'll definitely link him below. He's an amazing photographer, shout out to Tony. And he's been editing other people's raws for about a week or so now, just during quarantine period, and decided to share some of his own. So we're gonna go ahead, download a few photos and see what we can do with them. These look like it's a bunch of random photos from the past year at least. So let's download a few of these. First thing I like to do with my photos is I like to sharpen it a tiny, tiny bit. Um, just sharpening the outermost edges really works for me. Let's do a little bit of sharpening there. Okay, I really like this color. Let me see if I can bring this down a little bit. It's a little blue. Yeah, the, the whole photo instantly changes as soon as I change the temperature. I usually like to lower the saturation just a tiny bit and then raise the vibrance a bit. I don't like how this mountain is kind of just like bleeding into the sky, so I'm gonna try a graduated filter here to bring the exposure down a touch. Okay, so what do we have for skies? I also don't like how the rocks are blue as well. Let's see what I can do. I guess you could say my editing style is not as funky anymore. It's just kind of clean colors. I'm liking this, but I feel like this strip right here is really overexposed. I don't know what I did. A little shortcut alt to um, erase some of the brush strokes that you made. Okay, I'm gonna stick to this. I like the clouds, I like the definition. I wanted to see the mountains kind of come out off the sky rather than blend into it, which I think is okay. Okay, I think this is gonna be my final photo. And let's see the previous one. Okay, completely different photo. Wow, I completely changed this photo. It looks pretty good though. All right, so definitely saving that one. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do our second photo of the day. Let's see. What will happen? Okay, so here, pretty busy street. This looks great. I wonder if any of my presets would enhance these ones to begin with. I think presets are a really good way to start your photo editing journey because it really teaches you how to use the tone curve. Um, you can see not all presets, but a lot of my presets have the tone curve already built in and all the split toning, all the saturations, the hues already put in. So you can see why this photo is colored the way it is just based on this preset. It helped me a lot in learning how to edit and where to start. Okay, so right off the bat, I like this preset, but it's a little bit green. Bring the pinks out a little bit. I'm also gonna bring the exposure up, but See how much we can drown the highlights here. And nighttime photos are always, they're always gonna be difficult, right? Because you have a ton of different kind of lights all projecting on your scene, which is, it's almost impossible to edit. This is harder than it looks, because I think this pink now is just a reflection of some lights up here. How far do we go with the whole cyborg, big city kind of feel? You make it kind of like a pink and purple pop, almost. I may 
be the mood for this photo because I feel like there's already pink light coming down at the bottom. Okay, I think I'm good with this. I'm um, not gonna play with any distortion or anything. Okay, I think I'm gonna look at this and see what the original photo was. Damn. Yeah, this definitely grabs my attention a little bit more. Um, brought down the yellows that were coming from the building. We upped the saturation on the blue and pink so it looks more comic book, fairy tale like. Not sure how to describe that vibe, but. Definitely a little more pop. And this is our version. Cool. So moving on to the third photo of the day, another crowd photo. Let's try to manually make a black and white heavy contrast photo. It actually might work. We definitely have to bring this up. What I love about Sony's is just like, you can bring this up from nothing, literally nothing. focusing on the people. You're not focused on the McDonald's, on the advertisements, on all the buildings there. Like my eye goes straight to the amount of people in this image, which I think look cool. A little bit of green, uh, sharpening. Let me see what texture looks like. So on this. this is max texture. It's way too much. It's too much on the eyes. Maybe just <laughs> reverse texture is just like, <laughs> Skin retouching? Okay, I think I like this. I like the back and white. I wanted to do one photo, at least some back and white, and I think this is a good one because we already did a large crowd shot. So I think this works. Cool, I'm happy with this photo. Clearly the biggest difference will be that it is a black and white, but definitely my eye kind of just like goes with the people into the center of the photo rather than the advertisements, which I think are pretty cool. All right, moving on. I don't like right off the bat the blue in the sky at all. Let's try this as a starting point. Okay, so I definitely want to raise the exposure here on the building, but I don't want to fuck up the photo. I don't think we can do this. I want the CN Tower in the back, but like, is it the main object of this photo? No. I would love if we got the end of the shadow here. I think that would be really, really cool. But we're just going to shine that out there. We're gonna make it a little bit warmer. And I'm gonna try to see if I can <sighs> resurrect this photo. I do like already the green and the yellows in the building here because it matches his coat. It, the color palette looks really good right now. That's just me increasing the temperature a smidge. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just automatically make this photo golden hour. <laughs> Be like the CN Tower straight now. Okay. Yeah, a little bit better. I love this. I like, this is great. I love the light just coming out of here. I think that's amazing. Um, I kind of want to get rid of this flag, but I don't really want to commit to getting rid of this entire pole. <laughs> Maybe if I lower, let's go to the tone curve, let's see what this looks like, bring this all the way up. I do like the contrast with the whites up. Yeah, we'll keep it like that. And it also helps the CN Tower be seen a little bit more, which is nice. I do like heavy contrast in this photo. Okay, I'm already liking this photo. I don't know if I need to do too much to it. Maybe if I kind of bring down the saturation for the blues, just to kind of keep it the same color palette. Yeah, let's do that and let's bring up the greens a little bit if I can. There are no greens, right? Yellows, a bit more contrast. Okay, I'm liking this photo. I don't even remember what the beginning one looks like. I really, really like this photo. Okay, let's see. Holy shit. So obviously the original photo was taken during the winter because of the blueness in this photo. And we just made it into like this gorgeous sunset, downtown Toronto, sun peeking out from the buildings. I think it looks fantastic. Really happy with this one. Okay, moving on. 
This one is really, really nice. The only thing with shooting into the sun is that all the pixels around the sun are dead. Just absolutely dead. Maybe. This is why I love Sony. Like, only this area is dead. We just brought the entire photo down, which is craziness. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So I definitely like this overexposed look. Um, right off the bat, I'm definitely gonna take that out later. Let's see what kind of happy medium we can get. Okay, so let's bring the blacks down a little bit here. And I wanna change this yellow. It's, it's too harsh, I'm not liking it. So, sort of yellow, maybe orange, perhaps? Orange could be nice, and it also changes the lines, which is perfect. Perfect. I also haven't been cropping any of these, but I guess we can. So, spot removal, the best thing ever. We kind of lower the exposure. We can see how the building has more of a defined area here. This is it without. Back in. Also kind of like how there's a little bit of a sky, there's a little bit of blue rather than just white. The way I edit also is all over the place. Like I don't go from the top of Lightroom, going down all the settings, I jump back and forth constantly. And like, it's, it's probably really annoying for people, but that's just how it is. Cause it's like, oh, what about this? Oh, what about that? Let's fix this, fix this first. So yeah really interesting I, I would love to see someone else edit this and just kind of see what steps they take what do they make sure they put in every photo kind of like this grimy look bringing the blacks way down because the haze on this backpack is a lot and I kind of like this and I like how vibrant yellow and orange this is I think I'm gonna go with this I like that I Texture in the ground's a lot though. But, like, should I make it more texture? Maybe a tad? Drop the saturation, up the vibrance a bit. It's a little more softer yellow rather than what we had before. Let me see. Okay, I think that's good. I think I'm gonna go with that. Actually, I'm gonna remove the blue down here. I don't like that. So I'm really, really excited about this photo. Um, the before and after is like day and night. It's a completely different photo. Um, the final result looks good. There's no more blue in the photo, which I think is good. And yeah, so that is my fifth photo. So I hope you guys enjoy my little raw tutorial at home under quarantine. This quarantine has been really, really hard for freelancers lately and we're all in this together but we're all kind of suffering together and we're all trying to find our creative outlets but it's really hard to be productive when you are just stuck inside so with that we are going to see if i can keep making videos every week but if i cannot thank you for the support thank you for watching this video as always make sure you like and subscribe if you want more in computer at home videos let me know also make sure to check out anthony's work down below and until next time